So hi, hi everyone again. We are going to talk about conditional statements today. Conditional statements are conditions like in English we have inference rules that if a condition is true, then an action gets executed. And also we have uh, uh, two-way selection statements or two-way conditional statements. If a condition is true, we execute one branch. Uh, if it's false, we execute another branch. Else, we basically execute some other action. The motivation is actually originates from the previous uh, lecture. In the previous lecture, we have a prog we had the program that we wanted to co co compute the area of a circle, and that circle was given a radius that was entered by the user as a double or an integer from command line, but it doesn't really make any sense. That, uh, to compute the area of a circle that has a radius that is negative. Because radiuses that are negative cannot define basically positive circles. So if we are assigning, if the user assigns a negative radius uh, to the uh, value, to the radius variable, we should not program, uh, we should not print the area of the circle. We should actually inform the user that they entered a negative radius. So before we do that, we have to understand the Boolean type and what kind of operators we can uh, apply, op operations we can apply for Boolean types. So first we have the if statement, if x is greater than y, we will execute some kind of a, uh, a statement. And that is the original problem, including in our uh, uh, cha change maker program, if the values that we are printing for each one of the number of bills is zero, we should not actually enter those values. So, for instance, in our previous program, let's return to our change maker program, let's assume that the value that was entered was $20, from $20. You see that it actually prints that the change is zero and you need zero $20 bills, zero $10 bills, and all of those zeros for every kind of uh, uh, dollar bill and any kind of coin. And you don't really need to print those because you don't want to overload the cashier with information that they don't need to do. So in fact, for each one of these values that we are computing, we should actually have an if statement. We should actually print the fact that if the value of 20 is zero, we don't want to print any kind of bills. We shouldn't return anything because there is not, it's not necessary. So each one of these system out println statements should in fact be in its own if statement. If the value of 20 is different, and different is actually this exclamation sign equal, so we are comparing that that variable is not equal with 0, only then if that value is not equal with 0, we print 20. Otherwise, there is absolutely no reason to print 20s because there is nothing to be printed. And similarly, we are going to write for all of the other statements. So if the value of 10 is different than 0, only then we should inform the user that they have to print, uh, they have to pay back some number of uh, bills, of, uh, yes, bills. So let's actually copy this, so we can actually repeat it over and over again for each one of the bills. If the number of fives is different than zero, we should print the number of five dollar bills. Otherwise, we don't print anything, there is no else branch, uh, there is nothing to be done on that branch. If the number of 1 is different than 0, then we print the number of $1 bill. And you see now, if we are testing on, a previous, on the previous uh, question, uh, uh, how many bills do you need to print to get, to, uh, pre get a change of $0, you basically don't print any bills. We have to do exactly the same for the coins. So let's 
also put a dollar here to be complete and now we are going to do the same for the quarters if the number of quarters is different than zero then we are going to print the number of quarters otherwise there is no point to do so if the number of dimes is different than zero then we are going to print the number of dimes if the number of nickels is different than zero then we are going to print the number of nickels and finally if the number of pennies is different than zero then we are going to print the number of pennies so at this point we can actually run the original program and say that oh from twenty dollars there is nothing to be paid there are no change basically to be returned but if we have some number of bills like for instance if we want to pay 15.65 cents uh, out of uh, $20 it will tell us that I need four $1 bills one quarter one nickel and four pennies so you see that it basically selectively chooses to print only the amounts that are different than zero any questions yes excellent question so what about the plurals we basically need another uh, nested if statement so at this level we should check if the number of uh, let's say if the number of 20s is equal with 1 then we should print I need basically one bill else I need a plural some number of bills uh, moreover actually I can simplify this I can put a block at the beginning of this if statement and actually print the common part separately basically I can print it here with a simple print statement instead of print line followed by new line and then if I don't need to uh, basically print anything after we use we print that and if I do I print that so yes we can take care of the plurals too like for instance let's assume that we have zero price and uh, twenty dollars it will tell us that I need one twenty dollar bill if I run it now I need zero price out of forty dollars it will tell me that I need two twenty dollar bills no you don't need to uh, I'm just doing it so everybody can see how to do it uh, we are going to test these programs uh, manually we are going to look at the output and uh, you don't need to correct them uh, even the previous version that printed zero $20 bills is correct for the lab. I'm just giving it as an example for the lecture today. Okay, great. So let's return to the selection lecture notes and to different operations that we can do with Boolean types. So Java provides six comparison operators for Boolean operations. We can actually compare integers or numbers, reals, with the less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal, equal and not equal, which we just saw in the previous example. The result of any comparison of two numbers is a Boolean value, it's true or false. So for instance, if we assign to a Boolean variable B one greater than two, it will basically assign to the variable B false. One is not greater than two. 
So the comparison operators are one uh, are less than less than equal, and you see that the order of the two operators, two characters, are actually exactly as they are read in Java, less than equal, greater than greater than equal. The equality operator is different than the assignment operator. The assignment operator was just one equal character. Uh, the equality uh, comparison operator is double equal. We compare the first operand with the second operand and we return a Boolean value. Uh, the exclamation sign equal is again a comparison. It checks that is not equal. Notice this exclamation sign, it comes from logic. If you took CSC, let's say CSC 215, which is Foundations of Computer Science, uh, we covered Boolean logic and the negation operator, uh, one of the representations of the negation operator is the exclamation sign. There are other representations like the tilde sign, but negation in uh, programming, most of the, uh, in most programming languages, is exclamation. So exclamation equal means not equal. It's basically like a vertical bar that crosses the equal sign is not equal with uh, the other value. So now if we want to write if statements, we write an if, open parenthesis, Boolean expression. That should be an expression that is evaluated to true or false. Close parenthesis and then a statement or a block of multiple statements. So if we represent that with a flow chart or a workflow, it's basically the following. We start when we get the program, when we get to the if statement, we check the Boolean expression. If the Boolean expression is false, then we skip the statement and we continue with the next statement after the if statement. If the value of the Boolean expression was true, then we execute the statement within the block that follows the if statement, which is basically the true branch of that if statement. So here, here we have an example on the right hand side. Uh, if we have a radius that was entered by the user, and if that radius is uh, uh, greater than or equal with zero, then the area is computed as the radius square multiplied with pi, and we print that area. The area of that circle with the given radius is the new area. And otherwise, we can see that if the radius was not greater than zero, we skip that print statement and the computation of the radius. So we just continue with the next statements after the if statement. Okay? So the containment for the condition is necessary. In Java, you cannot actually write a condition without the parentheses. It will be wrong. It will be a compiler error. Uh, that is not allowed. Uh, you must put uh, correctly the parentheses within the condition. You don't need to contain within a block a single statement. So uh, if i is greater than 0, system out print ln i is positive, is equivalent with having a block that starts before the print statement and ends after the print statement. So the containment of uh, the, the true, uh, true statements, the statements that are executed when the condition is true, and we will see later that when the condition is false, the containment after the else statement if there is a single statement, is not necessary. So basically, it's a, it's a way to avoid uh, clutter, avoid unnecessary blocks if we know exactly that there is a single uh, statement after the if statement. One issue that we must remember is that Java by default ignores indentation. So the fact that we are putting this system.out.println indented with some number of spaces or tabs is not important. Java by default, the preprocessor of the Java programming language deletes all the white spaces and then it actually uh, parses the program. So this white space at the beginning here makes absolutely uh, no change in the execution of the program. Now we'll continue with if statements, if else statements or the two-way if statements. If the Boolean expression if that Boolean expression is true, there are statements that are executed for the true case. Else, there are statements that are executed for the false case. So we evaluate that one Boolean expression. If it's true, we execute the statements for the true case, and then we continue with the next statements after the if statement. 
if that Boolean expression was false, then we execute the statements for the false state ca uh, case, and then we continue with the rest of the statements. So we basically now have a choice. We execute the first statements or the second statements. And an example, if the radius is greater than zero, then we compute the area and we print it. Else, we just print the fact that this is negative input. And again, from the fact that we don't need a containment within a block, if we have a single statement, we don't need to put a block curly brace before and after the else statement. We can, it's optional, basically we can create a block, but we are not required to do so. What if we have multiple if statements? So let's assume that I write a program that computes the grade for a certain lab or even for the class. We know that if the score is greater than 90, the grade will be A. Uh, else, if the score is greater than 80, the grade will be B. Else, so the else that we have here matches the if statement. Basically, the else for the first if statement is everything below it. It's, we know that if the grade is not greater than 90, then we execute this block. So here we have an issue. All of the else statements are matching the first if statement that is unmatched above it. And this is how we are matching each one of the else statements. So the else statement here matches the if statement after the score is greater than equal with 90. So if the score is not greater than 80, it goes on the else branch and checks if the score is greater than 70. It gives the grade C else. If the score is greater than 60, it gives the, the grade D, else we have the grade F. So basically each else statement matches the previous if statement at the same level. But again, Java does not consider indentation as important. So it's basically the first if statement in the same block that is unmatched yet by, the, by an else statement. So the closest if that is unmatched by an else statement. Now, of course, this will actually create a lot of indentation if we have a lot of if statements. So normally we should uh, group together on the else branch, we have the new if, and we know that any other else will match that unmatched if, because the first if is already matched. So the this else will match, it will match the, the latest if that was not yet matched by any parentheses. This will give us more compact code, less number of lines of code, and easier to read once you get used to it. So let's see what happens if the score was 70. So the first condition is false. 70 greater than 90 is false. We go on the else branch and we execute the next if statement. If 70 is greater than 80, that's also false. So we go on the else branch of that. If the score is greater than equal with 70, it's true, because 70 is greater than equal with 70. So it will assign the grade C, and then it will exit the program, because the rest of the rest, the rest of the program is the else branch of the if statement that already succeeded. So we can always trace such if statements to make sure that basically the program executes correctly. One issue, one uh, uh, hint that I will always give you is that if you are not sure what else matches which if, you should basically write them in the format where you basically have indentation. And if you don't want to put the indentation yourself, you can always use Eclipse to do so for you. So you can select the entire program with Control A or just basically click anywhere in the program to select the entire program and then go to source to refactor, no, source, format, or correct indentation. So that will basically correct the indentation in the entire program and format the entire program. You can do exactly the same thing with Control A, Control Shift F. Control Shift F is basically uh, correct indentation. That will basically help you to write very clean, nice programs where everything is indented correctly, including nested if statements like we have in this case. We can see each if statement and each corresponding else right below it. Okay, great. 
the else clause always matches the most recent if clause in the same block. And this is important because in Java we don't match always indentation with the correct if. So we can see here that although this else is indented at the same level with the original if, in fact, this else corresponds to the latest if uh, in the same block that was unmatched yet. So basically, in this case, uh, if the value of i is greater than j, i is 1, j is 2, that is false. We continue with the next statement after the entire if statement. So the, the statement does not print anything. Basically, the else statement that we have here matches the previous if. If we do want that we print uh, b, in that case, we should basically enclose the if statement that we had before, the inner if statement within a block. So now the else statement matches the first if statement because those are in the same block. Basically, this else matches this if statement. Why? Because the entire block that we have in, inside is a block in itself. We are not actually having a, a, an else statement for the previous if statement. So let's actually color it differently. So we make a distinction between the inner if statement, the inner if statement, and the outer if statement that matches the else. So we can force every else to the correct if statement by adding a pair of braces to contain or basically create a containment for the inner if statement even if those inner if statements do not have else branches. Any questions? Good. Now, one thing that you have to be aware of, especially if you are using new line beginning of block style, is do not put semicolons at the end of conditions in if statement. The reason why is that semicolon by itself is a statement, it is a no operation statement in Java. In fact, anywhere within your program, you can put as many semicolons as you like. Basically, I can put a million semicolons here, and my program still executes fine, and basically does exactly the same thing as before. Because semicolon by itself is actually a statement, it is the no op statement. It basically does no operation. And therefore, if you put an if statement, like we have here, and you put a semicolon after the if statement, that is actually a complete if statement. Why? Because the semicolon by itself is the one single statement in the true branch for this if statement. So if you put a semicolon right after the condition in an if statement, you finish that if statement. And now everything else gets executed basically as a block because the if statement now is separate. We finish the if statement and now we are executing the print statement. So in this case, let's assume that the number of 20 bills is zero. Nothing gets uh, gets basically uh, executed. Basically, the 20s will be printed as zero $20 bills, no matter if uh, basically the 20s is zero. So let's assume that we want to pay zero out of zero dollars, and it tells us that we need to pay zero $20 bills. Why? Because this if statement is complete. We basically, if the 20s is different than zero, done. And now we are actually executing this block no matter if the 20s was 0 or not. So that is the, a common error that any beginner in Java, if they are using the beginning uh, uh, offline uh, block style, they would make. Because they would put semicolon after the if statement, thinking that every statement in Java has to end with a semicolon. And, but semicolon by itself is a statement. So it will actually, uh, that condition does not matter. It's, a, it's not a compiler error. It is a logical error and logical error in the sense that we are going to execute, uh, we are going to compute the area even for negative radiuses and we are going to print the area of those circles. 
which is probably not an intended uh, requirement for the program. So this error often occurs when you are using that next line block style, which basically puts the curly brace at the beginning at the same level with the end curly brace for the block. Let's take a look at this code. So what is wrong in this code? Let's read first the code. We are actually printing a message prompting the user to enter the total cholesterol level. The user will enter the total cholesterol as an integer. And then we are uh, uh, checking the condition. If the total cholesterol is greater than or equal with 200, then we are going to print your cholesterol is too high. You need to lower that. Else, we are going to print another message. Good either way. Is there any problem in this code? And if it is, please let me know what it is in the chat. Excellent. So first one is Ronnie. You are right, there are braces missing and this will result in a compiler error. That compiler error is the fact that we do not have the true statement or the statements that are executed when the condition is true, all in a single block. We don't have a begin block uh, which starts after the condition total cholesterol is greater than 200, and we don't have an end uh, uh, brace before else. In fact, Java will tell us if we take this code and we put it in Eclipse, it will find the compiler error that there is an else that is not supposed to be there. Why is not supposed to be there? Because uh, there is no if statement to end. The if statement already ended after the first statement. There was no else. Therefore, that if statement already ended. So this else is unmatched. It's basically not matching any if statement. So it's not that bad. Uh, the compiler already tells us that there is an error. Uh, we are not going to deliver uh, a program that doesn't uh, run to the user. So now, if we put a set of braces, it will make this program correct. What about this code? So in this code, we have exactly the same problem. However, it's actually worse. And the, the reason is that it's a logical error. So our the intended meaning when I wrote this program was that it will basically print your cholesterol is too high. You need to lower that if the condition is greater than, if the total cholesterol is greater than or equal with 200, if the condition is uh, true. However, if the condition is false, let's say that my cholesterol is 100, it will actually still print that you need to lower that, which doesn't make actually sense because uh, 100 is a good cholesterol or is supposedly to be a good cholesterol. So the problem here is that this is actually worse than a compiler error. It actually will print you need to lower that for cases in which it shouldn't print that. It's a logical error. These kind of errors are very hard to detect if we don't uh, put blocks everywhere that we need to and if we don't indent our code correctly. Because, in fact, we have an error in the indentation here. It's an error of style. The fact that we are aligning the second print statement at the same level with the first print statement, although uh, the second print statement is actually not part of the if statement. It should be part, uh, at the same level with if, not at the same level with System.auto.println. So it's a little bit worse. It can be corrected by basically putting a block around the entire two statements, two print statements. It will make it clear that these are two print statements within the if uh, condition. So what about complex conditions? Like when we file our taxes earlier this year in the spring, uh, we needed to basically check multiple conditions. We wanted to check if we are single or married and filing jointly or uh, filing separately and so on. So we need to actually construct some kind of a Boolean condition that checks multiple conditions. If the status is single and the income is between these values, then you, you apply some tax rate. If the status is married and uh, the income is within another uh, bracket, you need to file, uh, you need to apply a different tax rate, and so on. So 
In these kinds of cases, we basically need to uh, compute a Boolean condition. And this can be computed using logical operators. Java uses logical operators similar to Boolean algebra or uh, logic, where you basically can uh, represent con uh, uh, negation, which is basically an inverter. The negation of true is false. The negation of false is true. Uh, conjunction, which basically succeeds true if both of the operands operations, basically Boolean operations within the condition are true. Uh, uh, disjunction, which succeeds if either one is true or both are true. And finally, exclusive disjunction, which basically succeeds if exactly one of the operators is true, uh, operands is true, and the other operand is false. And here we have a few examples. Let's assume that we have uh, two variables, age as an integer equal with 24, and gender as a character equal with f. And we are asked a condition, the negation of age greater than 18. Age greater than 18 is true, but the negation of that is false, because the original condition was true. So the negation applied to a Boolean expression inverts that Boolean expression. If the original Boolean expression was true, then its negation is false. If the original Boolean expression is false, then its negation is true. So here we have an example. If the gender was female and we are comparing if the gender is different than female, that would be false. The negation of that would be true. Conjunction. Conjunction or the double ampersand operator in Java basically computes the conjunction of the two uh, uh, operands. So if either one of the operands is false, the conjunction will be false. So false and anything else is false. We can see that false and false is false. False and true is false. In fact, this double conjunction operator or double ampersand is shortcut operator. If the first operand is false, the second one does not even get computed. So it's a kind of a shortcut operator. If the first one is false, it will skip executing the second one because it knows the value of the entire conjunction. Similarly, if P1 is true, then it will compute P2. And based on P2, it will basically uh, output false or true. So let's assume the same example that the age is a variable that contains the integer 24 and uh, gender is a, the character f, age greater than 18, and the gender is uh, female is true. Why? Because 24 greater than 18 is true, and gender equal with f is true. Now let's take a look at the second example. Age greater than 18 is true, and uh, gender is different than f is false because gender different than f is false. So false and anything else is false. Disjunction. Disjunction basically is the natural language or. So in this case, it basically says either or P1 or P2 is true. So if P1 is false, then we compute the value of P2. If P2 is false, then the disjunction is false. False or false is false. If P2 is true, then false and true, or, or false or true is true. Finally, if P1 is true, no matter what P2 is, P1 or P2 is true. And in fact, this is also a shortcut operator. So basically, if the first operand is true, the second one does not even get evaluated because it doesn't matter what it is. The disjunction must be true. So let's take an example, for instance. If the age is greater than 34, or the gender is female, is true because the gender is female. If the age is greater than 34, or the gender is male, is false because both of the two operands are false. 24 greater than 34 is false. F is equal with M is false. Exclusive OR checks that only one and exactly one of the operators uh, operands is true. The other one is false. So in our example, if the age is greater than 34, it's false. 
exclusive or also called XOR. The gender is female, the gender is female is true, false, XOR true is true, because exactly one is true and the other one is false. In the second example, if both conditions are false, then the disjunctive, disjunctive OR is also false. So here we have multiple examples of logical operators. For instance, if the result is a Boolean variable, 5 less than equal with 9 is true. The negation of 5 less than equal with 9 is false. 3.9 greater than 3.19 is true. A is equal with lowercase a is equal with uppercase a is false. Why? Because in Java uh, we have case sensitivity. Basically, Java is a case sensitive language. Lowercase letters are different than uppercase letters unless we choose to ignore the, the, ca the case, in which case we will see that for strings, for instance, you can compare strings by ignoring the case, by ignoring if it's lowercase or uppercase. Now below we have another example. We have 5 less than 9 is true and 8 greater than 8 than 9 is false. So the conjunction is false and the one below is true because 5 less than 9 is true. Doesn't matter what the second operand is, it will never get ex uh, execu executed in fact. So let's see a couple of examples. For instance, we want to check if a number is divisible by both 2 and 3. We can check it by executing a conjunction. If the number modulo 2, the remainder after division with 2 is equal with 0, that means that the number is divisible by 2, and the remainder after division with 3 is also equal with 0, then the number is divisible by both 2 and 3. Similarly, if we want to check if the number is divisible by 2 or 3, we can basically compute. If the number is divisible by 2, then it's true. It will actually never execute the second one. It will only execute the second one, number modulo 3 is equal to 0, if the first condition was false. So that's why these are shortcut operators. The double ampersand, it's, uh, if the first operand is false, then basically the entire condition is false. If for the uh, uh, disjunction, if the first operand is true, then the entire conjunction, conjunction is true, and the second operand never gets executed. Exclusive OR always executes both branches because it needs to know the truth of both in order to evaluate if it's true or false. So if the number is divisible by 2 and is not divisible by 3, then it will print 3. It will print true. Or if the number is divisible by, is not divisible by 2, but is divisible by 3, then it also prints true. So let's see a more complicated example. For instance, we want to check if an year is a leap year. And the conditions for leap years are quite, it's a little bit complicated. A year is leap year if it's divisible by 4, but not by 100. However, if it's still a leap year, if it's divisible by 400. So what this says is that uh, every four years, we need to shorten the year with one year in order to basically uh, compute exactly uh, the length of an year or to have an average that is the length of an year. However, there is also an error, a small error that has to be corrected every 400 years. So a leap year, we have basically the extra day in February if the year is divisible by 4, but not by 100, so for instance, 1900 was not a leap year because it's divisible by 4, but it's not divisible by 100. However, it's also not divisible by 400. So, for instance, let's take a few examples. Is 2018 a leap year? You can respond on the chat. 2014, is it a leap year? Excellent. So it is not a leap year because uh, 2018 is not a leap year 
because uh, it's not basically divisible by 4 and we don't need to check anything else and it's not divisible by 400. What about 2016? 2016 was it a leap year? Excellent. And the reason why is that it's divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100. So the, con the first condition is true. Now, the question is, what about 2000? The year 2000 was divisible by 4, but it was divisible by 100. So the first conjunction that we have here is false. However, the number is divisible by 400, so it's one out of 400 years when we have this correction that that year is a leap year and uh, it's not basically divisible by 100. It is divisible by 100, but it's also divisible by 400. Excellent. So sometimes we need to write this kind of complex condition. In this case, we have a conjunction followed by a disjunction. In fact, the parentheses are not necessary because, again, in logical conditions, conjunction has higher priority than disjunction. So we, should, we could eliminate the parentheses without the danger that we will compute first the disjunction and then the conjunction. Because the correct order of these operators that is implemented in logic and in, uh, in Java is, in fact, conjunction is always higher priority than disjunction. Now, we said that the conditional operators double ampersand and double vertical bar are uh, shortcut operators. It basically means that when we have con in conjunction the first operand false, it doesn't compute the second one. Similarly, if we have in the disjunction the first operand is true, it doesn't need to compute the second one because the entire disjunction is true. Must be true. So, in addition to the single at end sign or ampersand and the single uh, and uh, the double ampersand and double vertical bar, we also have the so-called unconditional conjunction and disjunction. These two operators always evaluate both operands. Let's see what do we mean by that. Let's consider that we have a variable x is equal with one. And x uh, and there is a condition for an if statement. If x is greater than one, double ampersand x is incremented with one less than ten. Now, since x was exactly one, x strictly greater than one is false. So the entire conjunction is false. The second operation, basically the operand x plus plus less than ten, is never executed. Because the double ampersand is a shortcut operator. It basically says that if the first operand was false, no need to compute the entire expression. However, the unconditional conjunction evaluates both sides. So it will, although x greater than 1 is false, it will still uh, compare x with 10. And we actually know that that is true. And it will increment x. So after we evaluate this expression, the value of x is 2. And there is a similar case for the disjunction. Basically, if x is equal with 1, that is true. The unconditional disjunction will skip the execution of the second part, so the value of x is still 1. While the conditional disjunction, uh, unconditional disjunction, will actually execute both operands. So there are two uh, operators for both conjunction and disjunction. The doubled one is the conditional one, basically the one that executes only when it's needed, and uh, the unconditional ones, which are the red ones, which are always executing all the operands. So, for instance, basically, no matter if the condition is true or false, it executes these operands that have side effects like incrementing the value of x. OK, so we talked about if statements and the two-way if statements or if-else statements. The next type of conditional operators or conditional uh, statements are switch statements. 
switch statements are comparing a variable with multiple cases. Basically, it will compare if the value of that variable or of an expression is equal with either one of the following cases. If it's equal with zero, it will start execution of the block within the switch case uh, statement from the label zero. If it's equal with one, it will start from the label one and so on. However, it will start executing that block until the end of the block or it encounters a break statement. A break statement breaks the current block. It basically stops the execution of the current block and continues directly to the next statement after the switch statement. So if we want to actually execute a piece of code and then continue with the next statement after the switch statement, we need to have an explicit break statement. These break statements are basically keywords in Java that tell the uh, execution JVM, Java Virtual Machine, that we want to continue, we want to basically jump to the end of the current block. So if we write a switch statement, the type of the expression within the switch must be either of the types character, byte, short, int, or string. The values must be constant expressions of the same type, and it will basically do a single comparison with all of those values. The way that it works in most programming languages is by using a hash function, basically a function that maps the value of the expression to a single value in the codomain and the first one that is encountered to be the same with the values in the cases basically we start execution of the block within the switch case statement from that location from that label the break is optional but if you don't want to continue executing the rest of the statement within the break uh, the within the switch case statement you should put it so it will actually, if you don't put the, the break statement, it will just continue executing all the statements within the current switch case statement. The default case is when we basically cannot match any of the, the, the value, the switch expression does not match any of the case values. Default is optional. If we have it, it will execute those statements. Uh, basically when it's not the case that is equal with one, one of the values. Otherwise, uh, if default does not exist, there is nothing to be executed. So only when default exists, it's executed. So let's take an example. And you notice that in this example, we don't have break statements. So the character CH is initialized to the character A. Immediately, we jump for the case for A, and we print the value of that character. But, since we do not have any break statement, it will print the character two more times. So, it will actually print three times the character A. And the reason for that is that there were no break statements. Because if we have break statements, then it starts printing from the character A, and then it breaks the current block. It basically jumps to the end jumps to the end of the current block. So if we wanted only one character A printed or one B printed, then we need to use break statements at the end of the line. Okay. So let's do an example. Let's assume that basically we want uh, to have a switch statement. Let's assume that we have a string variable. Uh, color is equal with red and basically we want to print a statement that the circle is red uh, or yellow or green for different colors so we are going to switch on the color variable and now we are going to enter the cases so for the case of red we will print that the circle is red. For the case of yellow, 
will print that the circle is yellow. But if we don't have any break statements after each one of the cases, in the case of red, it will actually print both that the circle is red and yellow at the same time. If we want, we can put a break statement. So after which each one of these statements, we can put a break statement. So now, if we run the same program in which the, the color is red, it will only print one of them. It will print that the circle is red and that's it. Okay? So now we can add as many colors as we want. We can add, uh, add a case for uh, yellow, a case for blue. Each one is independent. The advantage of the switch statement to other if statements is that it does a single comparison. It basically computes a hash function, a value based on the color, and that value is basically matched to the first occurrence of that value in the cases. So it's like a jump, jump at that label, jump at the label that has the same value with the value returned by the hash function. So it does a single comparison with all of the values at once. So instead of having multiple if statements, if the color is red, else, if the color is blue, and each one of those will basically take one comparison, uh, compare the color with each one of those colors. We don't have to do that way. With the switch statement, we can basically get an optimized version that compares the color with all of the, the colors in one single comparison. And that is very useful. Now, in addition to the conditional statements, if, if double if or two-way if statement and switch, Java also offers what is called a conditional operator, which is an expression. So let's assume that we want to assign a value to the variable y based on the value of the variable x. So if x is greater than 0, we assign 1 to y, otherwise we assign minus 1 to y. Java also has what is called the conditional operator, which allows us within an expression to check a condition. It has the following pattern. We have a Boolean expression, followed by question mark, followed by expression 1, followed by colon, followed by expression 2. So what this does, it basically checks if the Boolean expression is true. If the Boolean expression is true, it executes expression 1. If the Boolean expression is false, it executes expression 2. There should always be both expression 1 and expression 2. So for instance, if x is greater than 0, it returns the value 1 and assigns it to y. Otherwise, it is, uh, uh, assigns minus 1 to y. So it basically it is like an if statement, but embedded into a single expression. The one below actually does exactly the same. The print statement checks if the remainder after division with 2 of the number num is equal with 0. And if that is true, it actually prints the number followed by is even. Else, it prints the number followed by is odd. So basically, we have two branches, but within the same statement. The precedence of operators uh, follows from the precedence from mathematics. Basically, in mathematics, you have that negation has higher priority than conjunction and disjunction. Conjunction has higher priority than disjunction, which you can actually see the priority in this case uh, basically increases uh, from bottom to top. The ones on top, which are the post-increment and post-decrement operators, have the highest priority, and the rest of the operators, the priority decreases with each one of the operators below. If you are in doubt, always use parentheses. Like, if you have parentheses, you know exactly, I'm going to execute first the parentheses, the expression within parentheses, and then the rest of the expression. So, conjunction has higher priority than disjunction, uh, negation has higher priority than conjunction, multiplication, like we see in this example, has higher priority than addition, uh, division has higher priority than addition, and subtraction. 
Usually on the bottom, the least priority operators are addition, uh, subtraction, and assignment. Now, assignment is a little bit different. So when we have an expression like A is equal with B, which is incremented with C, which is assigned 5, we are doing right associativity, grouping of these assignments from the right-hand side. So first we assign 5 to C, then the value of C to uh, be incrementing, incrementing B, then the value of B to increment A. All of the other operators are left associative. So only assignment is right associative. And the reason for that is that sometimes you want to basically have in one single statement, let's assume that we have multiple val variables, x, y, maybe z, and I want to assign to all of them a value, but I don't want to do it in three statements. I want to do it all in one statement. I can do it this way. The meaning of this being that 2 is assigned to z, now the value of z is assigned to y, and the value of y is assigned to x. So if we would print the values, it will print that all of them are 2. So in this case, I'm printing x, y, and z values, and it prints 2, 2, and 2. So what happened is that it actually assigned 2 to z, then it assigned the value of z, which is 2, to y, and then it assigned the same thing to uh, x. So basically, x is equal with y is equal with z is equal with 2 is interpreted as right associative. And that is different than basically when we do a division, because division, for instance, and all of the other operators in Java are left associative. So if we are writing something like x is assigned uh, 20 divided by 2 divided by 2, the meaning is really x is assigned the value of the division of 20 by 2 divided by 2. And that is, of course, different than 20 divided by 1, uh, which is the result of 2 divided by 2. So it will print, in this case, 5 for the value of x. Why? Because it's basically interpreted from left to right. The grouping, as opposed to assignment, the grouping is left associative instead of being right associative. So... Now we basically have in the lecture notes exactly the code. Some of you already saw it. I, I, I know uh, in the lecture notes, basically the code that we have for the if statements uh, to check if uh, uh, we need to put uh, basically the numbers of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies, uh, or they are zero. So if the number of quarters is different than zero, then we print the number of quarters. Otherwise, we ignore it. We don't actually print anything. And you can have a second level of if statements that are printing the plural. If the number of quarters is exactly one, then we just say quarter. If the number of quarters is uh, greater than one, basically different than zero, but not one, then we uh, add an S at the end of uh, the, the, the quarter. So at this point, we actually have everything that we need for selection statements. We have if, we have uh, uh, switch, and we have conditional statements, and we know about 